Hello there, and welcome to the Data Bits channel. Today, we are going to look at a product by one by one, and I've reviewed products by one by one in the past, and here is another one. This is a high fidelity belt drive turntable. Now this is meant to take up very little space in your home or office and allow you to hear your records in a high fidelity way without having to hook up speakers and without having to have any knowledge of turntables. Now, I don't know about you, but cheap turntables make me angry. Let's talk for a second. Do, do cheap turntables make you angry? Have you bought those cheap plasticky turntables in the past and they kind of sound like the speaker at a drive through restaurant of some sort? Yeah, yeah, I've been there too. And sometimes those things just blow up or catch fire. So uh, our goal here is to provide knowledge about something a little bit different. Um, and again, I've reviewed one by one stuff before and I have high hopes that this one is going to sound good. But rather than me just assuming this thing sounds good, we're gonna rip open the box, assemble this thing, and give her a test drive. Let's go.
And here we have it, our fully assembled one by one turntable. As you can see, it has a 1960s-ish kind of vibe going on with the way this front panel is. The speaker itself on the front here, or speakers behind this soft uh, cloth here, is, uh, is, is raised. So it kind of comes out a little bit from the front, so it's not completely flat. And then there's one by one written underneath the speaker grill here written in cursive. So that's kind of an elegant look to it. The finish itself is uh, probably a simulated wood grain finish, as you might have seen in the old days at Radio Shack. You would see that little sticker on the outside, that is. So let's take a look at some of its features, and then we'll give it a test drive and a test listen and see if it meets our expectations. Now again, we have our stereo speakers in a raised fashion there on the front panel there. And then we have a silver frame going around that speaker. Over here to the right, we have our controls. We have 45, 33, and then we have Bluetooth. So you can actually use this turntable as a Bluetooth speaker. So you can pair your phone to it and play your favorite tunes off your phone or tablet to this device. We have a volume control right here. Now the only thing I'm noticing that appears to be missing is a bass and treble control. That would be sweet to have, but as you can see, we don't have a bass and treble control. We have a start button here, and you start the unit by holding the button down to start it, and you do it again by holding it down again. We have our cartridge here, which is a magnetic cartridge made by Audio-Technica. At the end of our tone arm, we have our counterweight, and we'll go over how to set that here shortly. The turntable is again a belt-driven turntable. We saw how to install the belt earlier, and we have our 45 RPM adapter right here for some of those smaller American records with the big hole. You guys overseas won't need that adapter. Never saw such a mysterious thing as that in your country. And I don't know why we did it here, quite honestly. I think it's annoying. Let's look at the back of the unit. On the rear panel here, you'll notice our 12 volt DC input right here. Our DC adapter is already plugged into the mains on the floor over here next to me. On the back here, you have a selector, which has to do with this part right here. This is auxiliary out. So with this, you can connect this turntable to a sophisticated receiver that has a phono input. If so, you would switch that to the phono side. Let's say you have a little bookshelf system and all you have is auxiliary input. Switch this over to line out. So again, you have phono on this side and line out on this side. You have an aux in connector here. So that's your three and a half millimeter connector. You can plug an old iPod into this thing or an old tape deck and play it through this turntable's speakers. And for the first time, we have mention of this thing's model number, which apparently is 1-AD07US02. The bottom of the unit has these large, actually, rubber feet that will keep the unit nice and balanced and also keep your furniture from being scratched. And here's another view of the unit with the dust cover closed. Now before we get into playing a record, let's go over this Bluetooth feature real quick. So to put it in Bluetooth mode, you're going to switch this on here, and then you're going to press start. You should hear that sound, and then this light will start blinking. Now what you want to do is go onto your phone, or in my case, I'm going to pair an Amazon Alexa to this thing so that my music will hopefully sound better than that crummy speaker that she has built in. So what I can do is just say, hey computer, pair my Bluetooth speaker. Searching. I couldn't find any available Bluetooth speakers. Check the speaker you'd like to use and make sure Bluetooth is turned on. To pair a new one, go to the Alexa app. So what I had to do was go into the Alexa app and find this device there while it was still blinking. It showed up as 1x1BS020, and then I was able to connect my speaker that way. 
to my Alexa. Now, what I can do is if I'm playing a record, I can switch this around like this. And then once I go back to Bluetooth, within a few seconds, your Amazon Echo should connect just automatically, which is pretty cool. Hey computer, what time is it? Time is 8.11 p.m. Hey computer, will you marry me? Sorry Dave, I am afraid I can't do that. So as far as your tracking force goes, I personally don't own one of those scales either. So here's what I'm going to recommend. The instructions don't even say what the best way to do this is. It's just some pictures. But uh, what I would do is screw this all the way in and then dial it back to about 0.5. And I think we should be safe right there. Now, what you don't want is your tone arm to be floating around. Notice I still have the plastic cap on here so I can kind of play with it. But if I bounce this, it shouldn't just like fly up in the air. There should be a little bit of weight to it. And if I set this on the mat, it should just nicely sit there. So for example, if I have this set wrong or too far off, this may happen. It just starts floating around in midair. We don't want that to happen. So again, it seems to me that that 0.5 is a safe spot to put it in. That is if this is actually connected here. So let's go back to 0.5 and stay there. And then I think, I think that's gonna be a good spot for us, okay? So you may have to experiment a little bit with it. If it's too light, you may get skipping of your records and if it's too heavy, it may not be good for your records. So we have to kind of find a happy medium there. And sorry, I don't have anything more scientific. I just want to give you the tools that you'll have if this is all you have is the turntable itself. All right, so let's play a record and let's see how it sounds. Okay, I was gonna play you this record, Christmas with Colonel Sanders but I'm thinking that maybe the copyright police will come and arrest me. So I'm not gonna play you Christmas with Colonel Sanders. Instead, we're going to play, I believe, in St. Louis. Introduction by Sammy Davis Jr. This is a record made by KEZK FM 102. It is a special limited edition record. And what I ended up doing was increasing my way to the 2.0 setting. It seemed like the little S's in the record were a little bit I don't know, distorted. So setting it at the 2.0 setting appears to have helped that. So let's give you a taste of how this works. We're going to lift the tone arm this way. I've already removed the plastic cover on the needle. And I'm going to move this across here. I'm going to press the start button here one time, actually two times. If the light goes out, you'll need to press it twice. All right, and here we go. Here's a little bit of I Believe in St. Louis, because I believe in St. Louis. My name is Sammy Davis Jr. And I gotta tell you something, I believe in St. Louis, and I have for a long time. You know, each year when I come into St. Louis to host the Variety Club Telethon, I see a city with a heart. A city that has genuine concern for its greatest assets, and that's kids. Especially the kids who started life not as lucky as most. These kids have been helped by the St. Louis Variety Club, a club that the people of St. Louis have nurtured and watched grow into a tremendously successful force. You might say that the St. Louis Variety Club mirrors the, well, the citizens of St. Louis. From the old guys right down to the present people. Oh yeah, I believe in St. Louis. I believe in the people of St. Louis. Kids that populate St. Louis. Once again, my name is Sammy Davis Jr., and on behalf of everyone connected with the St. Louis Variety Club, thank you very, very much.
So there you heard it, a nice scratch free clean record in order to entertain you for just a few minutes. A uh, couple things I want to go over, um, kind of on my wish list here. So first of all, there is no return to the end of the record. So basically when the record ends, the thing just sits here and turns. I don't think Yeah, so there is nothing to tell this turntable that the record has ended, and that is like not cool at all. I don't like that. It should have at least an auto return or even just turn the power off at the end of the record. That would be kind of nice. Now, on the other hand, not having an auto turn auto return allows you to play goofy records, and I'll play you a goofy cardboard record here shortly. But uh, so that's a thing. Uh, the other thing I don't like is the a little bit of noise that comes out of the front of this thing when you first turn the unit on. So it has a little bit of background noise. That should not be a thing. I'll demonstrate that for you here. Here we go, powering up the unit. Start. Just a little bit of a sound of air coming out of the speaker. Not a fan of that. And my last gripe, which is a small one, give us a place to put this thing. Usually like a little spindle or something on the inside of here that we can place this so it doesn't get lost because this is the first thing to get lost is this 45 RPM adapter. So give us like a little, I don't know, a little, a little thingy to set that on. And this will conclude our video about the one by one high fidelity belt drive turntable system. I would describe the sound quality of this unit as a little on the tinny side and not very full, but uh, acceptable for its size for sure. And does this exceed the sound quality of those little plastic suitcase types? Absolutely. This is way better than that. So thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Facebook or Twitter and you can be a Patreon patron if you'd like. Big thanks to my current Patreon patrons and they are listed in the description below. There's also a link to the website to take a look at this unit a little bit deeper if you happen to be interested. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Quaker Granola Dips presents Great Moments in Rock and Roll. Stay tuned and find out if you are an instant winner. July 19th, 1985, the greatest humanitarian event in the history of rock and roll. Two billion people watched it on TV and heard it on radio. Live Aid. Not since Woodstock 16 years earlier had such a stellar lineup been assembled for one live outdoor concert. Power Station, Madonna, Phil Collins, Paul Young, Duran Duran, Paul and Oates, The Thompson Twins, Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, and John Paul Jones, Brian Adams, you too, and that barely scratches the surface. One goal was set by those who took part in Live Aid to end the human tragedy of world hunger in our lifetime. In the morning at Philadelphia's JFK Stadium, REO Speedwagon had the crowd on their feet. While Philadelphia rocked this continent, London's Wembley Stadium kept the excitement at a fever pitch in its corner of the world. Things really began to heat up back in Philly when the Thompson Twins hit the stage with a song and a message that captured the spirit of the day. One of the many highlights of the day was in the evening at Philadelphia when Eric Clapton and his band laid down a blistering set featuring Layla and Clapton's most recent hit, She's Waiting. July 19, 1985's Live Aid concert gave rock and roll a chance to show its compassionate side. It gave us a chance to give the starving people of the world a chance to live. This is only one of the great moments in rock and roll. Collect them all from Quaker Granola Dips.
We're sorry you're not a winner in the Quaker Granola Dips Great Moments in Rock and Roll Sweepstakes. But try again to be one of the more than 20,000 winners by collecting all five Great Moments in Rock and Roll from Quaker Granola Dips.